Why I suggested it. And, and what, a, what a great suggestion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You like calling the shots, do you, Mr. I'm not even sure what that means. Hi! We'll do it your way. Let's see what's so important. Thank you, Mr. Trowell. <laughs> see, you aren't going to believe me, but I have to prove it. Mr. Trowell, represent? Into my office. I want a woman so beautiful. She could make a blind man do a double kick. Even if there was no gravity on mm -hmm. earth. Still following her. She must have been against that gang like that. Yes, she is quite well. Whoa, buddy! You can't just blurt out stuff like that. There's no harassing women in my office. <laughs> her voice is as sweet as honey dripping off spongy sugar. But I had to keep my hair straight. Something told me this day needed my help. Mm -hmm. My name is Clarice Latrice. My friend has said you to help me, and I need your help, Mr. Trowell. I know. I knew the minute you walked in. Oh, Mr. Trowell, you're more skilled than I imagined. How could you have known I had a mystery for you to That is generally why people come to you. So, what's the problem? Oh, well, I think I need to interrupt if you already busy. No, ma'am, my schedule is wide open. Um, excuse me, but I was here first. I've had just about enough to do with this. Haven't you ever heard the expression, ladies first? Now fire! <laughs> so, please, what are you going to say? You went simply terrible. How got involved in this? I honestly can't say. I need to tell somebody. What? What is it? I'm a good girl, Mr. Powell. I always began. But somehow, they always get me stuck in the wrong crowd. I want to do better. I want to complain. You'll help me, won't you? Won't you? Alright, get to the point, Queen Ma. Something awful is going to happen at the International Private Detective Gala tonight. What? Something simply awful. What? So awful. What's happening? Oh, uh, well, I don't know exactly. But it's gonna happen, all right. I heard Big Bill telling his gang that it was tonight. Big Bill? <laughs> Big Bill! Big Bill. <laughs> Big Bill? He's the vilest gangster this country he's ever seen! <laughs> and he's planning something tonight. He's gonna finally be the evidence I need to put him away for good. But, please.
people and have them there. Take a time of our busy touring schedule to be here at your mayor's special request. Gosh, Miss Stewart, I'm your biggest fan. Wouldn't suppose you sing us a song, would ya? I'd be delighted. Get ready for the show, darlings. Hit it, boys. Ah! Here we are, Mr. Chow. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it doesn't even get any worse. Well, the place was elegant. I gave it that much. To make it all to my crowd and stick out straight up. It was nice having that classic day like Teresa on my arm, though. For the reasons that just I can't even. See, it's a safe bet. Other people in this room was working for the big bill. Only she could put a finger on her. Until I knew for sure. I have to be careful for both of us. For the love of Pete. Miss Mayor, I refuse to be in the same room as this guy. <coughs> now don't be such a sourpuss. What's the smell, Miss Mayor? <laughs> that, my good woman, is Trent Trout. And <laughs> not to offend any of you, but this guy is the best there is. He saved my little short from that foil gangster. Big bill. That was pure fluke. It's the one case he's ever actually solved. I'm not even convinced this big bill actually exists. It was no secret that I didn't get along with the local PD, but Tracy Thick had a whole other level of dislike for me. I wasn't sure why she got so worked up when I we met. It's because you're an idiot. <laughs> My best guess is that she had a crush on me. I didn't want others to know. She seemed uh, especially ticked off tonight, though. I was probably jealous that I was at the party with a dish like this. It wasn't my fault that babies were down me. You right, sis. Ooh la la. <laughs> Mr. Chow, I do believe I should go freshen up in the ladies' room. Smart girl. She probably figured we could cover more ground if we split up. Trowel, I knew this convention was a joke, but until you showed up, I didn't realize how big a joke it was. Oh, it isn't Tracy Dick. Managed to tear yourself away from the donut store, did ya? Is that the best police insult you can come up with? Your comebacks are as flimsy as your detective skills. Detective? Maybe this is supposed to be a state of occasion. Mrs. Stewart, perhaps a song would I like Splendid idea. I love what I do. Bring people together with music. Here, boys. We're celebrating your greatest accomplishment. Accomplishment? What? Accomplishments? Right. Let's go through, shall we? Oh, we don't need to do that. I oh, would love to know the stories behind the greatest mysteries of our age. Why don't you go first, Trowel? What's your proudest moment? You know, writing is not my thing. Say it loudly, you should commit. This is a masterpiece of 20 dynasty battle to the most easy seconds that I found. It was all brought to a museum in Paris when it was stolen by that most devious of thieves. Le cambrioleur. He thought his plan was perfect, but he did not realize that the great Jean Louis Philippe Moustache was on his trail. Le cambrioleur. He found a single egg from his disguise and discovered there was only one of the wheel in Lyon's made such place. Sure enough, his idol was under his establishment, and the back was legal bound! What about the computer there, Inspector? Did you catch him? Alas, he is still at large, madame. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll get him soon, Inspector. Okay, that was mildly impressive, I'll admit. But I'm dying to hear about Trowel's biggest case. Come on, Trowel. You know, I don't know if I'm up to talk next to right now. I'm actually feeling a little bit. Under the weather. Feather? Oh, feather? So you want to hear about how I found this feather? I love coffee. We all started back in the summer. Nah, it was a long time ago. Ooh. Now, back in those days, feathers cost four pennies a bushel. You see, Henry, my son was born, had a notion to travel some island in the South Pacific. Now, this is a full, 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 full
bitch who buys his big mansion in the end of the street, a fancy car, whole nine guys, but his prized possession is this feather. This song, witch doctor, charm with good luck. And that's how he got so rich. So, Jerry says anyway. And one day, Hannah leaves his feather at home. And when he comes back, the feather is gone! I'll be getting to the end of this story soon. So, they look kind of for this feather. But no one can find it. No one except me. I knew exactly who the golden copper was. Guess who it was? That who? Nah, it was the fire! Go figure. Anyway, looks like we're back to you, Trouble. Well, we've heard about the mask and the feather. That leaves. Are you the one who rescued Beverly Stewart was for the kidnapped? Um. Not exactly. You know, it was a British detective who saved me from those awful criminals. My hit song, I think that, but I'm not kidding, is all about that little adventure. So what have you done, Shaw? I can see you're not one to go as travel, so allow me. Now, feathers and ancient masks, they're fine and all, but Detective Trowel is a true hero. She saved someone's life. Oh my. Okay, Miss Mayor, let's just leave it at that. Nonsense, good man. You saved the life of someone incredibly precious to me, and I want the world to know about it. You see, my little George, he wandered off, and the boy got completely lost in the worst parts of our city. They feel bugs found him, and we're waiting for a ransom. But, Detective Trello risked life and limb to get him back safe and sound. Well, you should have been George here tonight. But I did! He's my little baby! Yes, the great Trent Trowell's greatest, most dangerous case is finding a puppy. And while he maintains that he wrested the creature from a gang of violent thugs, my investigation shows that the dog was at the local pound, picked up by a dog catcher when it ran away. Yeah, ran away from Bill and his gangsters when I busted in on their hideout. Look, I have bigger problems trying to chase after those thugs than getting the dog at that moment. And yet, you still didn't manage to capture a single one of them. No, Copper, I don't go messing around in your business 24-7. What's your beef with me anyway? All oh, right, all oh, right. The important thing is that George was rescued, safe, back out. Now, that's it. This is God's blood to ruin our evening of celebration. Now, let's uh, shake hands and be done with it. Yeah. Well, those are some amazing stories. But what about Beverly Stewart, who's responsible for a rescue once she was kidnapped last year? I'm glad someone has finally asked! <gasps> ah, you must be the first famous British detective, Miss Stewart's noble hero who reported the kidnappers. No, 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 that's just Watson, my assistant. Miss Stewart's liberation is due to the work of someone with far more intelligence. <clears throat> Allow me to present. What the blazes? Sixty seven. Who is that? I don't know. They're shut up from the hallway. Well, why are they talking from up there? I mean, <laughs> why not just come in? Because a proper introduction is in order. Don't you Americans do anything with propriety? <laughs> Allow me to present. I thought we had this place locked down. There shouldn't be people sneaking around out there. Are you saying we've got a security breach? Confound it all, won't you all be silent so that Watson can make the introduction? Miss Stewart, perhaps a song to create the proper ambiance. Of course, hit it, boys. I now need to present. <laughs>
Lord. He didn't know I was there right now. Stop it. Thought the blood was useless and an ashtray on a motorcycle. Oh, everything to disappear like that. I got to be here somewhere. Good heavens. How could this have happened? And if my hotel, those objects were entrusted to me by their owners. I'm responsible for them. I'm ruined. And, and there's a mayor's dog, and oh, and poor Miss Beverly Stewart. Why dread thinking what's happened to her? Kidnapped a second time? So that Miss Beverly just messed up, everything will be okay. You are a sweet girl. And you know what? You are probably right. After all, we have the best detectives in the world right now. <laughs> Well, what is all you shall need, my good woman? I, Shirley Pebbles, am on the case. There's no criminal that now with me. Now, Mrs. Benedict, it is getting quite late, or early if you like. You would do well to get to Frederick's to eat bread from his bakery. What? How do, how do you know that? <clears throat> Here we go. Your hands, Mrs. Benedict. What well, we admire with the soiree shows slight parts of seen in a pattern of bakers who make dough by hand. And considering you're the proprietor of this hotel, so not likely to own a bakery yourself. It's only logical Frederick's the baker and you assist him. But, but how do you know Frederick? Yes. I don't. Then how? The handkerchief you're using a joy of tears, madam, has an ink Frederick monogrammed into it. I can do it. He's your beloved husband, since you're willing to bake in his shop to spend time with him. And most of the baking is done at night to be ready for the morning customers, so it's likely you'll need it at this very moment. Miss Holmes. I'm amazed. Hey, Johnny could have told you all that. Oh, indeed. It's all very elementary. You are right, though. I should go get my Frederick. <clears throat> Gentlemen, and on, ladies, I live with the confidence that we'll get to the bottom of this case and must keep all of us safe. Nice party trick, Judy Pie. But it's time for the real detective work to start. My thoughts exactly. So clear out the lot of you. This is a crime scene. What? I must explain to you the plan. My expertise will be of use to you, no? No, guys, Inspector. Maybe they let you civilians trace around wherever you want in France, but not here. Which is exactly why you need to fret travel. Face it, dick. Nobody knows this thing, but this guy. Yeah, no, not in your wildest dreams would I work with you. No, listen here, Missy, show a little more respect for us. You know how many cases I've solved? Seventeen. How many of you solved it? Two hundred and sixty-eight. Woo, Missy! <laughs> what about you, Shirley Holmes? You may as well get your protest in too. No, that's perfectly fine. If you like me to leave, I shall do so. Well, you can take your objection in. Wait, you're actually leaving? Oh, indeed. No need to rock the feathers. Huh. Well, right then. I to believe at least one of you has some common sense. <laughs> yes, there's nothing to be gained from loitering about. And I believe that I've seen all that I need to see here to solve this case. And there it is. <laughs> I'm about to bring a full forensic squad in here for a three-day crime scene investigation, and you glibly state that you've seen all you need to, and it's gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes? In all probability, you would do well not to that share in her perspective. Um, but what could she have possibly seen in a few minutes? <laughs> We're going to be here all night now. I can see everything, detective. Oh my god, you! Details don't escape me. I noticed there's 28 light bulbs in this room, and one is burnt out. I noticed that the mayor was late to the party this evening because she nicked herself shaving, indicating she was in a hurry. I noticed this Beatrice has had one English muffin prior to this one because of the butter stain on the table when she set her current one down. And I noticed the scuff box under the table indicating a trap door of some sort, but it doesn't have any bearings in this case, mind you. It hasn't been used since yesterday. And I also noticed... Aha! Seven pieces. I knew there was a trap door. How else could everything have disappeared like that? There is always a trap door. Yes. As I said, it hasn't been used since yesterday, so it's not important. How can you be so stuffing? <laughs> because the sheer lack of scuff marks on the floor means it was waxed just before the party which forms a seal. If it had been used during the robbery, the seal would be broken. My goodness, do people observe anything at all? <laughs> I had to admit, this kitten had some brains. I had my own ideas about what went down there that night. I was willing to give her opinion a fair shake. 
Normally I'd work too long, but I had to do it again until we get along. It didn't hurt that she was quite a looker. Thank you. 
And he's so strong. <laughs> so he took everything. Even the mayor's little dog. Cute! By the time the lights came back on, he had made his escape. <laughs> I commend you, Mr. Eustache. That is a very proper explanation of the events. Thank you, mademoiselle. Yes, possible, but completely without explanation. In short, the wrong explanation. What do you mean, it is wrong? Because this is what actually happened. Marina! 
So where is the city? Come on, what's it? Of course I am. For the leaves, I have come to another specialty. I am selfish that he is involved and I am selfish and I will find him. Yet how much can I get? They all make sense. Well, maybe not the one about the empty coffin, but somehow Big Bill was behind them all. And one question still nagging. Where had Clarice gone off to? Did Big Bill learn that she was ratting him out? Or had she been in on it the whole time? I didn't want to believe that, but I had to consider all the options. So, do I do, do I go with the silly French guy? The cranky old lady? Or the smart, cute British chick. <laughs> Suddenly, the so hard. Wait up, Jody Holmes. The Trenton Sprout coming with you. Why the interest in 
break any solitary habits with me. Well, I, uh, I just dolled the song to me. She was so smart, she made me feel like a sap. Put it in a good place. And look, man, if I had never for every time I'd seen a woman as beautiful as her, well, I had five cents. What was I supposed to do? Tell her that I loved her at first sight? What kind of a reaction would that get? <laughs> Mrs. Drow, I, I do think it's best that I was part of the investigation on my own, but I should be happy to share my findings with you once I have them. Good day, Mr. Drow. What? Just like that, she's gone. I could tell it was going to take the worst to win her over. If only I could find something she missed at the scene of the crime. I could impress her. Besides, Clarissa said Big Bill was up to something there. He must have left something behind. Miss Flanagan, you can go back to the hotel and see if I can find any clues. All right, good luck. <laughs> luck is for shucks.
Who is that? That's one of Big Bill's henchmen. I've dealt with him before.
Why keep them in some secret hideout under this hotel? I used to keep some of my other uh, things under there. It's a really nice yeah. place. Even the owner knows about it. Uh, what's her name? Mrs. Benedict. Right, Mrs. Benedict. It's completely legit. She knows all about it. Well, it seems like Big Bill was clean. I knew I should be happy and relieved, but I felt as cheated as the day I had twinkle twinkle little star is the same tune as Bob Bob Bob! After all, what was Trent Cow without Big Bill? How about I help you pick out some more shadier characters in this town? What do you say? There's still a lot of bad guys out there. Big Bill was right. This city still needed someone to look after. Justice still needed to be served. And wouldn't this case still unsolved? Frank Trowell still had work to do. Yes, uh, nonsense. Who would think that? 
Is it really so far-fetched, Doctor? Don't you think it odd that Charlie Holmes is so good at knowing what criminals do? Since she knows our minds so well, it would not be stretched to say that she is a criminal mastermind even greater than I. It is through sheer deductive reasoning that I make a conclusion that I do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. You do read a lot of psychological dissertations about the criminal mind. As I'm obsessed with how to commit crime, to know my quarry better, of course. Of course, of course. And you do know common police procedure and what they often overlook. So I can find those clues myself. Really, watch it. Don't tell me that you're starting to believe this woman. No, no, it's just, um, interesting, that's all. Yes, Dr. Watson, it is very interesting. It'd be rather easy to convince others that this detective is so good at figuring out crimes because she is the one who gets them. Listen, you're wasting your breath on Watson here because he's near to the end. When no friend Mrs. Smith is in here, so you can drop that train. I will find out your mom in this, as I always do. <laughs> you may be laughing now, but soon you'll be laughing from your jail cell. Come along, boy. Oh, where are we going? Oh, we're not going anywhere. I'm leaving. I'm sorry, John. I think this relationship has run its course. It is time I get back to England and begin some rework now that Shirley Holmes won't be there to stop me. I, I don't understand. Is it something I did? Oh, you were wonderful, John. Simply wonderful. You played the role perfectly. But I have a criminal empire to run. And I have been away too long already. Wait. You mean you are a criminal? <laughs> oh, yes! Then Holmes didn't do anything. It was you who committed the kidnapping robberies last night. No, no, not I. And of course, who didn't do it? But I could see that someone was saying of a grand heist. No one has got an opportunity for crime better than I. At first, I thought of committing the robbery myself and beating the unknown criminal to the punch. But when I figured out who the real criminal was, well, I came up with a much better idea. Rather than seeing a few tricks to make sure you don't look foolish, what a perfect chance to rid myself of that incorrigible reason for good. All I had to do was frame for the crime someone else was already committing. <laughs> What have I done? Oh, don't let her bother you. What's she to you? She's an innocent woman. Well, there's nothing you can do anyway. But you told me all about it. And, and I'm going to tell the police about it. What are you going to tell them? I have done nothing illegal. Well, not here at least. <laughs> and the evidence will soon be stacked against her rather convincingly. Nothing you do will change both minds. You've got nothing. You can't save her. Maybe not, but I have to try. Oh, how adorable! Now I know why I fell for you in the first place. Well, all the best. Anything won't work out. <laughs> I've got to tell somebody. Even if they don't believe me. I've got to tell them that Shirley Holmes is innocent. <clears throat> My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. What is it, lad? I have important information about the crime of the Victoria Grand Hotel last night. The kidnapping and robberies? Well, let's hear it. Some must be falsely accused. Innocent people will be framed for a crime they didn't commit. Ah, you see? I'm glad you came to me then. We're just dying to solve that case. Come with me, sir. Tell me everything you want.
do you? You still think I can do it, I suppose. Of course. You told me so when I asked her. How could she hold you? She's back in New York. No, she's not. She's right here. Oh man, she's finally lost it. Is Ethel sitting on the bench with us right now, Aunt P? Of course not. She's just gonna get some tea. Sure she is. And she's got that money to it with her. You'll still have enough of that cousin dinner? No, why would you be with Ethel? Because you think Ethel kidnapped her. I never said that. You've been saying the whole time that she did it. No, I said she ate all the Irish muffins. Oh, no. <laughs> so, who did the robbery and the kidnapping? How am I supposed to know? Honestly, girl. Should we be out looking for clues or something? I prefer to let the clues come to me. That makes no sense. Just you wait and see, dear. Well, should we be all right here on your own I've got to go get something for my room. Be right back. You know, Jim, you don't always need to look after me. I'm personally capable of taking care of myself. She, people don't give me nearly enough credit. She thinks I'm clueless. Well, you just run along and do whatever it is you need to do. Listen up, detectives. 
You're all under arrest for the robbery and kidnapping. You played a nice little game pretending to be detectives, but now we know that the crooks probably have been for years. That's absurd. Mayor, this is how it went down. The private detectives had it all planned out. To create a distraction, Shirley Holmes started yelling from the hallway. Look over here! Meanwhile, Charles snuck over and turned off the lights. Once they were out, when Splash grabs the mask, Old Lady Beatrice grabs her feather. I got my feather! Charles grabs the dog. And Shirley Holmes grabs Miss Stewart. You're coming with me. They hide the evidence and turn the lights back. Then they pretend they don't know what happened. And straight ahead was the mastermind behind it all. It was all planned out. Oh, really, Watson? These detectives are the perfect criminals. They don't get at catching criminals because they're criminals themselves. What do you think you can believe this? Hey! What were we supposed to believe? All those silly villain stories? Watson, please. You've been deceived by Maureen R.T. No, not deceived. Sure, the light. You make all these claims, yet you have no evidence. Oh, there is evidence. I found a feather in your suitcase upstairs, Aunt Beatrice. What? 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 And your buddy found a double mask in your room, Inspector. Ah, uh, this is all a setup. What about me? I don't have no, no dogs in my pockets. Yes, surely we Carol is innocent. <laughs> Obviously, I can see that 
Maloney is the better man for the job. Good luck with the new job, Cap 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 Captain. Captain. Good luck with the new job, Captain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for us to go. Yes, I suppose you're right. That's so awful. But at least it's over now. However, I don't know if I was wise the morning you stick like that. Oh. I'm just emotional and I'm okay. But you were just doing nothing on these parts. <laughs>
only turn it into a framing. They must really be upset with us. Maureen Artie, of course, would have suggested this to Watson. She must have known he was involved at the very beginning, but for them to go through all of that just to have us locked away? <laughs> it gets you out there, doesn't it? Well, the crooks are crook. For once, I agree with Carl. I may be annoying to a lot of people, the people in this room, even, but I'm not going to break a lot of it you. Aw, oh, detective. Don't get all mushy on us now. Very well. There is all but one thing to do. What is that? Turn ourselves in, of course. What? what? Bye. 
by Dr. Reginald Watson. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye, Sam. <laughs>